I mean, don't ever be afraid to ask for help, whether it's advice for a job, you never know who's listening. I felt so alone, like at the beginning. And then I realized, you know, I'm not the only one going through this. Just don't give up, you know. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Career Therapy Podcast. My name is Martin McGovern, and we are back with a special episode of Life After Layoff. A very special episode because we actually have two guests with us today, Matt and Millie Hayes. I think I'm saying your last name right. Um, I'm going to read off a quick intro of each of you, and then we will ask you to tell us about yourselves and, and get into the story here today. So Matt is a security apprentice at Evolve Security Academy, and Millie is a former sales manager at Palms Casino, excited for future opportunities. Matt and Millie, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for Thanks having for us. Thanks for having us. I'm super excited to get into the conversation. Um, we'll begin with the age-old, infamous interview question. Tell us about yourselves. I was born in Serbia, migrated or immigrated over to Southern California, spent up until after college there, came over here to attend UNLV for hospitality school, and then ended up by pure coincidence in sales and have been there ever since. Wonderful. All right, Matt. Um, I was born in Utah. Um, I moved to Las Vegas when I was in high school. Uh, I went to UNLV where I graduated with a political science degree. Um, living in Las Vegas, I just pursued a career in hospitality. Um, and, you know, that's what I've been doing pretty much here since. That's amazing. And I want to kind of kick this one off because we, you know, this is our first time having a, a couple on the show. Um, and I know it's a unique situation to both be going through, uh, a, you know, a layoff situation around the same time as each other. But let's rewind the clock. How did the two of you meet? The infamous Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And yep, surprising uh, enough. Yeah, well, that's, hey, Tinder does wonders <laughs> in the world, right? Uh, that's so cool. And so, um, you know, uh, as we get into the story here, I'd, I'd love to get a little bit of background about what each of you were doing in your respective jobs. Um, and, you know, a lot of times a layoff can color our experiences in a negative light, but I always like to focus on the positive. So what did you enjoy most about your respective careers leading up to, you know, the big transition point? Sales is kind of a challenge but in a good way so you're dealing with something different every day because you're dealing with people all the time so many people may not know what hotel sales is so basically you're selling hotel room packages as well as meeting space so things like conventions meetings or even social events like weddings celebrations things like that so i love dealing with people i mean i'm, I'm a talker so i love talking <laughs> And just meeting people and kind of hearing what, what they want to do, their vision, and then having them be able to, to do that in, in our hotel. It's amazing. And Matt? So I was a client services manager for a mystery shop and compliance audit company. Um, they did that for all the casinos and nightlife, not just in Vegas, but all over the country. And I like doing it because I got to, you know, interact with other hotels like outside of Vegas and um, different departments within the hotels and just help them improve their performance and make sure they're compliant um, with all their regulations. So um, it was a great job and I learned so much from my previous job. That's so cool. And, and I think it's kind of interesting uh, that you're both in Vegas, that you, you're, you're in Vegas, right? I think Vegas, you know, we have so many people from Chicago on this show because that's where I am. And, you know, uh, yes, yesterday or earlier this week, I was chatting with someone and she was kind of talking about the different vibes that different cities have. You know, mm -hmm. New York is all about kind of money. LA is about fame. Chicago is about like working hard despite the weather. And like, what, you know, what are your thoughts on, or share us a, a little bit about what it's like to live in Vegas and work in Vegas? I think I would say Vegas is all about fun. That was kind of the biggest thing that, at least at my job, and when I met people, that's what they wanted to do, whether it was business, whether it was a wedding or a celebration. The biggest thing was, how do we entice people and make them have fun and have a kind of unforgettable experience. You know, someone from the outside, someone like me, what would we not, 
you know, expect? What, what would be something surprising about living and working in Vegas that we wouldn't expect? I think that it's like the hospitality industry is so special, especially in Vegas. Like you have such high standards. Mm -hmm. um, like when you go to a restaurant, you know, a lot of five star, you know, restaurants here. So, you know, when you work here, you have to be at the top of your game and, you know, know what you're talking about. Um, so I think it's just a different industry. Like you go to other places in the country and, you know, customer service is a little more relaxed where here it's very professional. And yeah, so. Five star doesn't quite mean five star. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And so, uh, you know, give us a little insight into the hospitality world. What have the last four-ish, five months been like in that space? I would say making connections with people is kind of the biggest thing. I mean, if, if you don't make connections, relationships, and really get people to trust, there's not... I mean, I wouldn't be able to do my job. I know Matt wouldn't be able to do his job. But, I mean, it's it's fun. You can, at 1 a.m., if you decide you're hungry, you can go grab something to eat. If you want to go out at midnight, you can go out at midnight. If you want to just, you know, drive off into the desert, you can drive off into the desert. You drive it's off into the desert? What's <laughs> going on out in the desert? <laughs> I don't know. People have bonfires. <laughs> oh, that sounds awesome. It's like Burning Man every weekend. It's like city and country. It's it's a good mix of, of life. Oh, but I love hot. it. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> it's kind of like your backdrop. It's very city and country. <laughs> exactly. Nice. Um, that's so interesting. And so, you know, as as you got into the hospitality world, uh, you know, you're both very, you know, outgoing people, 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 um, and you're in this hospitality world. And then something like COVID hits. What what does that look like on a on from your perspective? What was the rise of the like? When did it start becoming concerning? I'd probably say around March. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it came over here and you know, things started getting a little worried. Um, I know I had clients that started canceling because they started getting worried and, you know, just snowball affected to what it is now. So. And how fast was that snowball? It was pretty quick. Yeah. I mean, once, you know, it hit, um, they declared, you know, they shut down all the casinos and the hotels for a few weeks. So, I mean, just the whole city was just impacted, so. Which they haven't shut down the casino since John F. Kennedy was assassinated, and that was only for 24 hours. And this was for weeks. Oh, weeks. Wow. So it was, I would say everyone was scared. Nobody knew what to think. Nobody knew what to do. Everyone was just kind of in shock. Even today, not all the casinos are back open. Mm -hmm. There's still a ton of major casinos that are still not open. It, it's the image that's popping into my head is that like opening scene from resident evil when they're going through Vegas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just sand we, just dunes. <laughs> we, we watched a few of those movies after oh, we're like, is this, is this real life? <laughs> is this about to happen? <laughs> oh God. Oh man. I really feel for you. And so, you know, as you're walking around Vegas right now, what, what's the sort of sense? What's the feel? Are things, as casinos did start opening back up, is there a, sort of a sense that things are on the a path back? Is it, is it kind of like just, you know, people keep saying, I can't wait to get back to normal. And I'm, I'm a little worried that normal, there's not a getting back to a normal, right? Everyone keeps mm -hmm. saying the new normal, the new normal. But like, that is, it sort of seems to be what we're headed toward is just something different, something totally, you know, unknown. Um, but what has that looked like on your side, the sort of if you could maybe like walk us through the roller coaster that's been happening um, in, in your city. March, everything shut down. I mean, on the strip, completely empty. Hotels boarded up some of the casino windows, doors, things like that. So people wouldn't break in, obviously, since there's nobody there. Um, they started bringing in people to clean. So then a few few weeks later after the shutdown, I would say cleaning crews started showing up and then maybe around May, I think the city, the locals kind of started taking the city back. So you started to see people outdoors riding their bikes, you know, kind of the 
I don't want to say la la phase, but kind of the like, oh, this is great. We got our city back. And then after that, it was kind of crickets again. Wildlife started walking, ducks, geese, yeah, animals. <laughs> geese walking down Las Vegas <laughs> Boulevard. What? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then come June, things started opening back up. So people were excited to actually get back into the hotels. The locals were going back. I would say the strip is probably what struggles the most. Kind of those local casinos are, are, are back doing well, but the strip is struggling, especially since international travel has still yet to come to Vegas. What's that? And you have all these giant conventions that can't happen. They bring in so many, you know, tourists and then like gambling and all that good stuff. And mm -hmm. like, like, like table games at the casinos, like now there's plexiglass in between and like and on the slot machines, like it's just a whole different vibe here. And, you know, nightlife obviously didn't come back and all that good stuff. So, I mean, it's still nowhere close to what it used to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine. And so, you know, as you've been going through this experience together, uh, which, you know, it, it's one of those things where it's, <laughs> uh, I find the job search and, and going through a layoff, uh, one of the hardest parts is the isolation that happens, right? Mm -hmm. You go from being around a lot of people to being at home all by yourself. And, you know, I have some friends who are incredible extroverts who had a very hard time during uh, COVID not being in relationships and things like that. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm kind of curious, what has that sort of experience of going through this together been like? Were you, was it all kind of at the same time? Uh, did you have different timelines that these things happened to you? What was the experience like? So I was laid off first. Um, I was laid off in mid-March um, pretty early on. Um, it was kind of more scary for me because it was like a little earlier on and, you know, not that many people had been laid off yet. It was just starting. So like for me, it was, you know, a little bit of panic. Like, what am I going to do? You know, I don't, what's my next step? Um, even though there's not really much you can do in that situation, <laughs> but you know, that's just the process that goes through your head. And then, you know, with my wife here, she little, like, when did you get mid June? Mm -hmm. I got laid off in May. Oh yeah. May. Okay. Yeah. So it was a little bit later. So by the time I started going through it and going through that initial like shock and what am I going to do? Matt was luckily over the shock and he was <laughs> like, it's going to be okay. So that was really helpful because at first he was down and I could kind of help bring him back up and then I was down and then he helped bring me back up. So it's, it's been hard in the sense of both losing our jobs, but really good in the sense that we got to lean on each other and kind of give each other advice because we were both in different stages of the layoff. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's really cool that you've had that, you know, back and forth with each other. And, and I'm kind of curious, I'd love to get into the actual story of the layoff experience. Cause I think that that's something that people are really scared of and mm -hmm. something that people feel like I'm the only one going through it when they go through it. But as we know, and as you're talking, like it can hit both of you at the same, you know, same, but <laughs> yeah. slightly at different times. Um, so Matt, start us off. What was that day like for you? Man, I was just, completely blindsided just because it was so early on mid-March for me. Um, it was just a, a normal day. I like before work, I had been talking to some of my clients and they were canceling and, you know, I kind of got that like nervous feeling, um, but I didn't expect to get laid off so soon. Um, so I came into the office um, pretty early on. I, you know, my boss called me into her office, you know, just said, because everything going on, you know, we're going to have to let you go. And it just happened so fast. Like I was just so blindsided. Like it took me a, like an hour to realize what happened. And then, you know, after that, it was just like kind of the fear of what am I going to do now? Kind of Was it like a early in the week, late in the week? Like what was Yeah, it was late like? in the week. Yeah, it was a Friday. So, okay. Yeah, it and it was later in the week. And what was that like, you know, first period afterward, right? You get that shock. Um, a lot of times people forget to ask questions or forget to like get clarif clarifications on things uh, when they get news like that, that's like so, sh you know, out of the blue. Um, did you, you know, get a moment to, you know, learn about what to do next, how the company might help? Like what was, 
What, what was their process of helping you through it? I was lucky to at least get severance. Um, so that was, you know, beneficial. And, you know, at the time you think, oh, I wish it handled it. They'd handled it different. But at the same time, it's like, you know, it's kind of hard for them too. I mean, I know it's not the best thing that they want to do, but at the end of the day, business mm-hmm. is business. So. Right, right. And so how long did it take you to sort of wrap your head around things? At least a month. You know, it was just a lot of back and forth. What am I going to do next? And then it's like, is the hospitality even going to come back anytime soon? You know, you just have a million different things going through your head at once. And so you just kind of have to figure out, you know, it took me a while, at least a month to figure out what I was going to do next. So, Well, I'm excited to hear a little bit more about what you <laughs> did decide to do next. And, you know, I know, but the listeners are, are very <laughs> curious to find out. Um, and, and Millie, t- tell us about your experience. What was that week, that day like? So for me, it happened May 1st. It started like a normal day, you know, working from home. And then um, my colleagues and I kind of kept a group chat going just because kind of have that comfort and support. And one of them sent over like an article from like a local news channel or something. And it was from our company, which was saying that they were about to let go of thousands of employees. So we sent that over to our direct boss and we're like, Hey, what's going on? Like, are we all going to get let go? Didn't hear from him crickets. And then around like two o'clock, I got that call. And the second I saw his name pop up on my phone, I'm like, Oh, I know it. And I mean, he handled it really well. He was super devastated to have, have to do that. And I mean, like Matt said, at first you're like, wow, that was, that was harsh. But then after you kind of process it and you're like, I mean, they didn't want to let us go, but they had to. So after that, they paid us until, so my last day officially was May 16th. So they paid us the two weeks and then I also got a severance, but the company suffered a lot. So the hotel that I worked at is still closed along with three or four other properties. So they didn't really have options to give us, but we kept our insurance. We still have our insurance through September 31st. So I think the company did everything that they, they absolutely could do to help us. I mean, yeah, that's incredible. And it's, (laughs) it's, and that's, I think something that people don't always remember when these things happen, Mm -hmm. right? You know, companies aren't sitting around looking for ways to, you know, hurt their employees, right? Yeah. They want to create good environments. They want to do things mm-hmm. right. It's just that it's very tough to do. It's tough to run a company. It's mm-hmm. tough to manage those finances and to do all those different things and to plan for the future. And and I think it's interesting on the job hunt side too, right? When we're looking for yeah. jobs, we sometimes are like, you know, I'll talk to people all the time and they're like, I just want a job because I just need to pay rent. And I'm like, yeah, but if you say that to a company, like they yeah. need to do more than just pay rent. <laughs> they need to like keep everyone employed somehow. And obviously mm-hmm. there's like a lot of trouble. And and it, so you have to have empathy on both ends of the spectrum there. Um, and so now we're in the phase, you know, where you're sort of planning for the future. You're trying to figure out what your next steps are. The hospitality industry is in a in a pretty tough spot right now so Mm -hmm. what have been your reactions to that right like this is this was an industry that you're both kind of suited for right you both have very people person personalities and you kind of fit in well but now that that industry is kind of going through its own sort of changes Mm -hmm. you have to change as well and so what has been you know, each of your reactions to that situation and how have you learned to adapt in these times? For me, um, like I said, the first month I just didn't know what to do. And then um, I was just thinking about what else could I do? Um, And then I was talking to my uncle one day and he was like, why don't you do something IT related? You always like technology and all that good stuff. And I was like, maybe that's a good idea. And so I started researching and, you know, I just came up with a, you know, a path that I wanted to pick. And then I just kind of pursued it from there. Um, Still kind of in the middle of it, but I feel like it's going pretty well so far. How did you end up, you know, picking your path? I think a lot of people struggle with like, well, 
what do I do next? Do I get educated? Do I start a business? Do I just go try and find another job? Do I just go live with my parents? Like there's a million things that people are trying to figure out. So what was that process of picking your next steps and, and what, how did you make that decision? Um, so I just was the hospitality industry. I was, was just struggling so bad. And I was like, I can't go back and you know, I like it. So I was like, you know what? I don't really have all the knowledge I have now, but you know, if I go back to school, now's the perfect time. I don't have a, you know, a job. Um, but I found a school that was good. So I could still, you know, go to work if I needed to. And the hours were good. So, you know, I just found a school that worked for me at the time and also in the future, if I needed a career or job at the moment. Nice. And, and what sort of part of the IT world, just for folks who might have opportunities, what sort of things should they be thinking about if they want to chat with you about it? So I got into cybersecurity, um, kind of where my old job, I worked with a lot of security departments in the hotels and I really liked that aspect of it. And I also really like, you know, IT and technology. So I was like, cybersecurity seems like a great fit. After that, I, you know, looked into different schools and I found the one I liked and, you know, it's been great. I've learned so much and I can't wait to start a new career. I mean, it's a huge change. I mean, I've been doing hospitality since I could, you know, work. So it's definitely a new challenge, but I'm excited. Absolutely. And Millie, what's your, what's your story been like since that fateful day? So the same thing with Matt. I mean, I struggled the first month or so. I mean, the, the first month you get that kind of like, oh, nice. It's, it's a vacation. I'm going to enjoy time with family. And then I would say probably about a month and a half into it is when I start hitting that kind of freaking out. Then I kind of let myself freak out for a little bit. You know, you, you have to, you kind of have to let yourself let it go. And then I took a breath and I'm like, well, what, what can I do? I can't do anything. I didn't lose my job because I wasn't good at my job. It, I lost it because almost everybody in the city is going through that, that worked in hospitality. So I kind of just started looking for jobs in the similar kind of spectrum. So sales, things like that, kind of realized that that wasn't my thing because pretty much all that's left is insurance sales, commission-based sales, which for me and having a family, I'm like, I, I can't do commission. <laughs> God bless everybody that can, but not for me. <laughs> and then I kind of went back to when I was younger and thought about healthcare and things like that. And that's kind of an avenue that I'd, I'd be super interested in exploring. And right now I'm kind of still at the point where fingers crossed the hospitality industry does come back. I've done a lot of research, talked to a lot of professionals in the hospitality industry and things are coming back, not very quickly, but they're coming. <laughs> so I'm holding out hope that things will get better. But if not, then I did decide that I'll, I'll probably go down the healthcare route, maybe health administration or respiratory therapy, something like that. So for everybody out there, I'm still figuring it out. It's okay to still figure it out. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And I love the fact that you're, you know, you're not losing sight of what your interests are, right? I think mm -hmm. a lot of times when folks go through a big shift, they maybe sometimes revert to a little bit more of a like desperation or feast or famine kind mm -hmm. of a mindset. And they're just like, any job, I'll take any job. But you're yeah. kind of revisiting your roots. You're saying, wait a second, I, I have this love for technology. I, I have these skills and these interests in, in other industries. I, I don't have to limit myself to you know, what I've done in the past, I can actually pivot and expand and find new ways to use the same skills in different situations. And I think that's such a mm -hmm. important thing to realize. And so that's all happening right now, right? You're in the mm -hmm. middle of it, right? I'm talking to you both, uh, you yes. know, from the from the trenches. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, this is definitely, you know, we might even have to do like a, a check in down the road to see where <laughs> you're at. Um, but it's not the only thing going on in your lives right now, right? You've got a lot of big uh, th surprises from this whole, uh, yes. this whole time of, in, in the world right now. So let us into a little bit uh, more uh, of an insight into what else is happening with you two. So before, you know, coronavirus and all that stuff, we were 
trying to have a baby. Um, it just so happens that as soon as we get both get laid off <laughs> that we found out we we're both expecting. So <laughs> we're excited, nervous, but you know, that's amazing. Well, congrats to both of you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So awesome. <laughs> I know the timing is definitely interesting, but it'll be a fun story to tell, uh, you know, your kids in the future. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and how has that sort of impacted your mindset and, and how you're looking at everything right now? So for me, I would say that's kind of a big reason why I haven't been able to pivot so much into a different career, you know, I was looking at going back to school for healthcare, but unfortunately that's kind of a big roadblock because I'd have to take time off for school. So I feel like that kind of humbled me a little bit to be patient and wait to see what my industry does because like you said, I'm kind of not ready to let it go. And then down the line, if, if it really doesn't come back, then after we have the baby, then I'll explore going back to school. But for right now, it's, kind of just taking my experience and seeing what I can find that I still enjoy doing. And then for me, it just kind of lit a fire under my butt, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, it's not just, you know, us we have to worry about anymore. We have to, you know, mm -hmm. fire for a little kid. So we, I don't know, I just like, man, I got to really, you know, get going and make sure everything's ready to go by the time they're born. So there's nothing like yeah. some good motivation, right? I know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a pretty funny thing. Like um, I work with folks all the time from, you know, all over the spectrum of different jobs and, and different backgrounds and stuff. And I always find like motivation is such an interesting, it's like a, it's like this amorphous thing that we're always trying to like mm -hmm. lock down somehow. And, you know, I, I worked with someone at one, once for a long period of time and I just couldn't figure out how to motivate this person, right? I, I was like, you know, everything else was more important than finding a job. The, you know, mm -hmm. working on the basement or doing you know, something with this car because, you know, he had the security of his spouse uh, working. And then one day he showed up and he goes, so my wife's pregnant and uh, I need a job. And I go, oh, okay. And within like a month and a half, he found something. And so it's like, you know, six months of like fixing the basement, you know, two months of like being real motivated. And I, I find that yeah. to be such an interesting, uh, you know, interesting thing our brain does, right? When we have mm -hmm. security, when we have, um, you know, and that's why people will stay in jobs that they don't like for long, long periods of time, right? Because they're like, well, you know, I'm pretty secure here. I guess I don't need to make a change necessarily. But as soon as something rough happens, we get that fire lit and we, we really start mm -hmm. going after it. And so what has that job search experience been like during this time? Because things haven't, you know, gotten back to a, a solid state. Things are still moving every day. We're like, are the job rates up? Are they down? Things seem to be improving. But what have you been seeing out there? And what has been your approach of like tackling this hunt now that you're back in it? I just go on LinkedIn every day and kind of see what my, I guess, colleagues or people who share the same industry as I do. And people are getting jobs. I mean, whether or not it's in the hospitality industry, people are starting to make it through this. So, so that's been really, really helpful. And I've gotten a few bites myself. So that that helps even even one after two 300 applications just just one is huge <laughs> that is true and and honestly <laughs> uh this is something i tell people all the time but the response rates on job boards are like one to four percent mm -hmm. on average so like yeah 200 to get one that's like right on the mark i know yeah. a lot of people feel like that's a crazy number but it that's why we push networking and maybe you're in a mm -hmm. great position because you are such, you know, people, people uh, to be able to go out and build those connections with folks. Yeah. I have to say that's been something recently that I've been doing a lot is just kind of reaching out for help and just asking people, you know, maybe not so much asking for a job, but just asking for advice. And that advice leads to a lot more than you would ever think. <laughs> I mean, that's how I ended up with, with an opportunity. That's all. Can you expand on that? I think it's great to always hear like the stories behind those, those opportunities when they pop up. Yeah. So a long time ago, I actually interviewed for a particular position with, with this particular person. 
And it's been about a year, maybe a, a year and a few months. And that person actually recommended me for a job. So just kind of post, even posting things on LinkedIn, just asking for help doing that. I think I did that, that might've sparked something. And then my name came to mind and it created an opportunity. So it's something as simple as that. Yeah. I love that. And people ask all the time, like, how do I, how do I stay in touch with people? How do I make sure that people don't forget who I am? We, mm -hmm. We'd be surprised. People have good memories. If they see your name pop up, they'll yeah. be like, oh, right. We talked a while back. <laughs> you know, it's, we don't have to ping people every single day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Matt, how about you? Uh, for me, like at the beginning, like I was, you know, looking for jobs kind of towards my old, you know, career path. And now I'm just starting to transition over to the cybersecurity world. So it is a new industry for me. So it is like starting from scratch, but I know I'm trying to reach out to people and make new connections and, you know, great to meet people and help them and they can help me and hopefully, you know, somewhere down the line, they can recommend me for a job like her, but you know, <laughs> It's not plant just those about seeds. That. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. And so when, when you're going through this process together, um, how are you finding ways to support one another? Like what have been some of the toughest moments that you've had to help each other out throughout this process? For me, I mean, <laughs> I love her, but you know, she, you know, obviously we're both expecting. So, I mean, it's, you know, she's had her. The emotional aspect. Emotional I'll aspect say it because he won't say it. <laughs> But, it's been you know. very emotional. I mean, hormones are going crazy right now. So he's been the head on my shoulders to kind of calm me down because there are days where I wake up and I cry. I'll admit it. I'm sure a lot of people out there do the same. And he's just been super supportive and always telling me everything's going to be okay. And I mean, he has a lot fewer of those moments, but... <laughs> I yeah, try and do my best moments. when it's his turn. <laughs> There's days where you feel defeated, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you, maybe you applied for a job that you really liked or, you know, you had hopes or, and, you know, and you didn't get that position or whatever it might be, you know, everyone's different, but you know, sometimes it can, it's defeating sometimes and, but you just have to keep going. Yeah. I Tomorrow's think, a new day. Yeah. You know, you never know what's going to happen the next day. That's the biggest mindset is if today wasn't a good day, tomorrow's going to be a better day. And if not, then there's always the day after. I love that. Oop, my mic's getting weird. I love that. Um, <laughs> and so do you like have, <laughs> do you both like sit together and like job search together? Are you sort of like you go off into separate rooms and like do your own thing? <laughs> what, what's the, what's the situation like over there? I feel like it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some days I just, you know, want to be by myself and I'll go up you know, to our office area and, you know, do stuff on my own. Other days we'll both sit on the couch and look for jobs. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, we always try to have each other's back and we bounce, supportive. yeah, we bounce ideas off each other, you know, read the job requirements, things like that. And just say, Hey, do you think I'd be a good fit? I mean, it's, it's easier when you have something like that. Cause he will knock some sense into me where I'm like, Oh, I'm going to take this job. And he's like, but they don't have really good reviews. It doesn't seem like the work-life balance. Do you just want a job that you're going to be stressed at? So that's nice. And then while he's in class, I normally look. <laughs> so you're still being, you know, really mindful of the types of roles, right? You're not just mm -hmm. rushing to get into any role just because, yes. you know, things are going on. You're really being mindful. And what are the things that you're trying to take into account? You mentioned a few things there, but what are you looking for? as you're searching these boards, as you're looking at these opportunities and, and checking out these companies, what sort of criteria are you trying to assess? I mean, for me, it's work-life balance. I mean, you know, I'm a big believer in, you know, keep work at work, keep your home personal stuff at home. So, I mean, it's just, for me, it's just finding something, you know, I want to come home and, you know, we're starting a family. I want to be happy and come home. I don't want to come home stressed and, you know, miserable, you know, and reflect that on them. So, I mean, you know, we're lucky to have a situation where we can take the time to look for a career we mm -hmm. want to have instead of just going to find anything. So that's how I feel about it. Yeah, I would say the same work-life balance. I mean, 
how the office is itself, because if you have a toxic work environment, I mean, you're not going to be happy at work or at home because I mean, as much as people don't want to admit it with a toxic work life, you're going to bring it home. So you just, you don't want to get into something like that. And then of course money. I mean, I don't want to make a lot of money. It doesn't matter to me, but I want to make enough to be comfortable. So that's, that's been a factor too. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think the things that you're laying out make a lot of sense. And, you know, you mentioned that you're not in as much of a rush as, as I mean, obviously with a baby on the way, there's always <laughs> a, a motivation, <laughs> but um, what are the things that you've done throughout your career that have put you in a position to be able to take your time a little bit and look critically rather than just trying mm -hmm. to grab the first opportunity that comes your way? We saved the I want to say around January and even, I mean, we've always been savers. So anytime we can, we always take what we can and put it into savings. We have a good comfort where we don't have to rush to look for anything. And you'd be surprised at the support that people are willing to offer. I mean, not just family, but friends and things like that. I mean, everyone is going through the same thing. So everyone just is lending out a helping hand. So it's nice. And I worked at, you know, a few jobs where I, you know, it wasn't a good fit for me. And like, it just was really, you know, going to work every day was such a struggle. And, you know, I'm getting older. I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> I'm at the point in my life where I want to enjoy my job. I want to have a good career, you know, not to support my family, but also be happy. You know, it's a lot that you have to take into factor mm -hmm. when you're looking for a job. So. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it's smart that you, you know, you thought ahead on these things. And, you know, I think that was one of the things when this crisis hit, it was a struggle for folks because a lot of, I think there's, I don't know the statistics specifically, but most people don't even have like a month of savings set aside. Mm -hmm. And so being strategic while you're in a role, it really helps. So I think that might be one of the biggest lessons people learn from a pandemic like mm -hmm. this is like, oh, wait a second. There is no such thing as a secure job. There is no such thing as like yeah. a 10 year plan, <laughs> baby. <laughs> it's like every year you got to be, you know, figuring out how to prep for yeah. the future. I think that that's a huge learning and, and something that I'm, you know, really happy that you two have been doing over time. Now that you're at this point and, you know, I really appreciate you both sharing, you know, your journey and your story, especially when you're kind of in the thick of it. I think it's, it's sort mm -hmm. of hard for folks and, uh, you know, to sort of take a step back and, and really look at the situation objectively. But, you know, what are some of the things that you might recommend to others who are going through a similar situation to you, whether it's going through this as a couple or going through this as expecting parents? Uh, what maybe advice do you have to share um, something that you've learned through the process together? Honestly, I'd say take care of yourself. Be very mindful. Know, know your triggers just self-care is the main thing because people let that get away from them and that's that's when they go into panic mode. Uh, also, find something that motivates you, whether it's something, someone, motivation like we spoke about earlier is, is key. If you're not motivated, then that's, I mean, I don't, I don't even know. That just speaks for itself. It's tough, yeah. Yeah, and ask for help. I mean, don't ever be afraid to ask for help, whether it's advice for a job. You never know who's listening. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, you really don't. Um, just because something's bad today, you know, someone might reach out to you tomorrow. Don't panic too much. You're not alone. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's my biggest thing was like, you know, I felt so alone, like at the beginning. And then I realized, you know, I'm not the only one going through this. Just don't give up, you know. Yeah. You know, have your goals and stick to them no matter what they are. Um, you know, you might have to have a career change like me. You might, you know, keep down the same path. You don't know, but make sure your goals are in line with what you want to do in the future. So. I love it. I love that you're thinking critically and supporting each other and going through this journey together. Um, it might even be a blessing in disguise that you're both going through this together. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for sharing your stories on the podcast today. I really appreciate you both being here. I know it's a definitely a, a unique uh, you know, conversation to have all three of us on the call at the same time. Um, but what, one thing I'd love to close the conversation out with is, you know, if there's something that, you know, 
you're looking for that you'd like to share with the audience? If there's anyone you'd like to connect with or people you'd like to, you know, reach out to you, um, what are you looking for and how could people get a hold of you? I would say maybe anything in the hospitality travel industry as a front runner. And then if not, then administrative in healthcare for me. And then, you know, getting into cybersecurity, I know I'm looking into security analyst roles. Um, you know, I just think that's a great fit for me and, you know, what I like to do. So I feel like that's a great industry for me. And I know I'm available on LinkedIn. I believe she is. Yeah, as well, same so. for me. <laughs> Wonderful. And I'll share both of your LinkedIn links in the description for anyone who's interested in reaching out. And I just want to say, I love your positive attitudes and your approach to, you know, going through this journey. It is a journey and it's uh, you know, a lifelong one when it comes to the career. So Matt and Millie, thank you so much for joining us today and being part of uh, Life After Layoff podcast series. Thank, thank you so you, much Mark. for having us. Thanks for having us. Thanks so much for stopping by this episode of the Career Therapy Podcast. It's been a pleasure having you. And if you're curious about what we do here at Career Therapy, head on over to www.careertherapy.com to see all of our coaching options, resources, and links to other things we got going on. If you would like to share your story on this podcast, something that you've gone through, a transition you've experienced in your career, whether it's getting a job after college or going through a layoff or getting back into the workforce after raising your family, we would love to hear from you. Head over to linkedin.com slash in slash Martin McGovern and shoot me a DM. Let me know what's going on and I'd really like to share your story with the world. What we're trying to do here is really normalize the emotional side of the job search because we all go through it. We all have tough times in our careers and sharing these stories really helps people feel less alone and feel more empowered to take their career back into their own hands and make something of it. So thank you again for stopping by. If you'd like to leave a like or a comment, subscribe or share, or leave us a review on iTunes, and I think maybe even Spotify, we'd really appreciate it. Best of luck to you in all of your career endeavors, and I'll see you on the next episode. Cheers.